Today, we are going to be looking at the presidents who have supported multi-level marketing. The revolving door between the MLM industry and high-level American politics was well-documented in Robert Fitzpatrick's book, Ponzinomics, which I highly recommend. I have an affiliate link to the Amazon whatever to buy the book in the description. Let's start with this one. Nice. so dramatic for no reason. I am delighted to have this opportunity to talk to so many of the salespeople who help our economy grow and help keep the American dream alive for millions of Americans. Last year, there were more than 7 million Americans in the direct sales industry. More than 300,000 of you are over the age of 65. More than 500,000 of you have some kind of disability. So haram. Three quarters of you are women. Who I did not have sexual relations with. Thank you for your work. God bless you and God bless America. Gross. Going in chronological order, this is George W. at Amway China 20th anniversary. Mr. President Bush. Ni hao. <laughs> oh my God. That was not something I knew I needed. Ni hao. <laughs> How many times did he practice that? <laughs> Two syllables, Mr. President. You got this. Ni hao. How, 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 how. You fooled me once. You fooled me. We can't get fooled again. Let's go back. Let's run it again. Ni hao. <laughs> Imagine the whole. Look how proud he is. <laughs> Ni hao. <laughs> Speak a little Chinese, too. Shi shi. He's flexing on y'all now. <laughs> See, he's in his bag. He's like, I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna hit him with the knee how, and then if it goes good, I got a couple other things up my sleeve. They went buck for the knee how. She she, woo, chefin. She she. <laughs> <laughs> the little insecure, <sighs> the little insecure exhale laugh at the end. I want to thank the leaders of Amway China for contributing to causes also so dramatic that make the communities in which you live a better place you can't lead unless you know where you're going it's important to have a vision and a goal i'm honored to be in the midst of such a successful group of people what a weird edit yeah! Okay, moving on. Ronald Reagan speaking at Spirit of America rally in Atlanta, Georgia, January 26, 1984. This specific event was talked about in detail in Ponzionomics. Instead of just calling it the Amway rally, they called it Spirit of America rally. He wasn't allowed to speak about MLM, says Dave Vaughn. His aides were worried because at this time Amway had to pay money for Canadian tax evasion, I see. But he still went to the event because Jay and Rich DeVos, Jay Van Andel and Rich DeVos were the main funders of his presidential campaign. Gotcha. So he just spit the cookie cutter bars. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I guess we could skip the first five minutes of standing ovation. Thank you very much. Jesus. I believe that I'm looking at citizens who don't consider themselves Democrats or Republicans so much as just deeply patriotic Americans. They're in the audience like, no, we're Republican. <laughs> we have one policy intended to benefit Americans from every walk of life. It's called economic recovery. It's called crack cocaine, and it's going to change everything. We salute the spirit of entrepreneurship in the black community, and I'm pleased to say we're getting the federal government out of the way. This did not age well, bro. Insane. Americans everywhere are making it up, and we will continue to make it up. Thank you. We're on to the GOAT right now. Here we go. <laughs> there it is. Hey, check this out. Hey, liberals. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about Trump and him promoting network marketing, ACN. He also had his own MLM company called the Trump Network for a while. Hello, I'm Donald Trump, and welcome to the Trump Network. I want you to know why I'm so excited to be a part of this great organization. Yelling, why? At no time in recent history has our economy been in a state that it is today. It's a mess. The Trump Network wants to give millions of people renewed hope and with an exciting plan to opt out of the recession. Opting out of the recession. You're watching like CNN Finance and you're like, 
Recession coming? Nah, I'm good. Is he deaf? Why are you yelling? He talks like a big kid. Y'all are hilarious. I hope you're going to join us. It's going to be fun and hopefully very profitable. Me trying to craft the perfect DM to a girl. It's going to be very fun and, and hopefully very profitable. <laughs> All right. You thought we were done with Trump. No, we're just getting started. This video that I'm about to show you is truly from another timeline. This is from another America verse. Donald Trump and Joan Rivers demonstrating the ACN video phone. Ah! <laughs> Joan, you look beautiful as always. You never change. How are you? I am wonderful. How are you, my darling? I am so excited about this. ACN is a great company, Joan, that we both know. What year did this come out? 12 years ago, 2010, which means they damn near already had fucking FaceTime. Who, who needed this? Who asked for this? To my right are Greg and Tony from ACN, who will tell you what to do. We're very excited to be here to have you help us introduce to the world the new ACN video phone. Your task is to launch this product to hundreds of ACN representatives. 500 salespeople from ACN are going to be judging you. 500 people who are chasing a dream, who are absorbed in a cult, frankly, who are all losing money, big debts, big bad debts. It's gonna be tremendous pressure, but that's okay, right? How much emotional appeal can you draw into this presentation? This product will allow me to not only hear my family and friends, but also see them up close and personal. Hi, baby. So wait, she was on, hold on, go back. Let me understand the product. Also see them. So he's dialing up his girl. There she is on camera. Up close and personal. But also on the phone. So now <laughs> you have two devices. You have the phone in your hand and the phone in front of you. Well, what's the point of the phone in front of you then? Shouldn't the one device be able to do all of it? Reminds me like the old timey phones back way back in the day when the phone was first invented, where you had to take like the one piece and hold it up to your ear. And then the other piece was the microphone. Tell the governor I have a message for him. Wasn't even close. The men absolutely easily defeated the women. So stupid. Those women are so stupid, frankly. Dumber than a dog. They can't even do basic tasks, frankly. And you look at what we did with ACN and we did it bigger and they did it better. Dude, my aunt is only like in her early 40s and I always joke with her about how bad she is at technology, which I, I exaggerate it sometimes, but like I do know more than her, even though there's only 16 years betwixt us. The fact that somebody twice her age would be in a, in a position to make like major decisions about the government or like you see all those uh, congressional hearings with like Mark Zuckerberg or the TikTok CEO and it's all these dinosaur old white people being like, can my refrigerator hear me? <laughs> Does Google know that I went to Outback Steakhouse on Friday? Does Google know? You know, winding down here, I don't have many left. We were going in order of presidents chronologically. Now we're gonna go back a little bit. This is Maria Otero, an Obama administration person advocating for Herbalife post government career. Now let's see how the same thing happened with Byron, Joe Byron. The nutritional supplements company Herbalife announced today that it has hired President Joe Biden's former chief of staff, Alan Hoffman. The specifics of this aren't as important as the overall point, which is that there is a revolving door of high-level politicians in the United States going and being paid millions of dollars by multi-level marketing companies to use their political connections to help protect the MLM companies from prosecution and from regulations and laws being put in place that might threaten their pyramid scheme business model. The last example I will give you, which is current, why did Kamala Harris let Herbalife off the hook? This is talked about specifically in Ponzinomics. Kamala Harris is married to a guy named Doug Emhoff, and Doug Emhoff was a lawyer for a law firm called Venable, and Venable was responsible for defending Herbalife. Now, at this time when Herbalife was under scrutiny because of the Bill Ackman publicity campaign against them and the billion dollar short bet that he had against them where he was betting that their stock would go to zero. This is what the whole movie Betting on Zero is about, the documentary. During that time, Kamala Harris was the attorney general of California, which is where Herbalife was in hot water. Basically, Kamala Harris would have had to go against her own husband in order to prosecute the company. And that's why, in many people's opinion, certainly in my opinion, Herbalife was let off so easily. They should have been shut down. It was a $50 million investigation that 
Bill Ackman had set up to expose the company for being a pyramid scheme. And he did an excellent job in that famous clip from the former FTC chair, Edith Ramirez. She says, The word a py pyramid does not appear in our complaint. That is true. They were not determined not to have been a pyramid. They were not determined not to have been a pyramid. We are living in the midst of, and we have been living in this for decades now, the biggest political fix boodling and bribing, as Robert calls it in Ponzi-nomics, just outright corruption of the government system. There have been FTC commissioners who, after their career at the FTC, were contracted by the MLM industry or MLM companies or the Direct Selling Association to advocate on their behalf. You know, you have to think about how corrupt this whole thing is. Imagine the number one at the FTC liaising back and forth with their replacement at the FTC, who was probably someone who was trained by them before they left. Now they can call them and be like, yeah, let this company off the hook or, you know, just, it's just a game. It's just a huge con game. In my interview with Doug Brooks, who is featured in Betting on Zero and litigated that class action lawsuit against Herbalife and several others as well, he talks about in the midst of the proceedings against Herbalife, they out of nowhere decided to switch legal counsel to another lawyer which is pretty unusual for a case like that. And then, of course, he ended up finding out that the new lawyer they ended up hiring was actually the former mentor of the judge who was presiding over the case. Doesn't take a genius to put two and two together. I didn't even mention how the founder of Amway, Richard DeVos, his son, Richard DeVos Jr., is married to Betsy DeVos, who was Trump's secretary of education. This is a huge, uh, not even conspiracy. I don't even want to use the word conspiracy. This is a huge scam that we're witnessing and we're still in the midst of it. And it doesn't matter, Democratic or Republican. It literally goes all the way to the very top. And these MLM companies don't care about who the political bribery lobbying, as they call it, money goes to. Whoever's in power at the time, that's whose side they need to be on. It truly is a shame that American presidents, the highest level of American politics, have routinely perpetuated the lie that multi-level marketing is the American dream. Even more fucked up than that, corporate greed, materialism, doing whatever you need to do to increase your own bag and being a hustler that has sort of become a big part of the american identity like that is an american value now in ponzinomics robert talks about the gordon geckoism or maybe you would call it the jordan Belfortism of america gordon gecko's character in wall street says greed is good and this was like the finance bros of the day were super bricked off hearing that greed is right greed works most of the mlm folks of my time that i have studied they all were the Wolf of Wall Street. Nobody in MLM seems to grasp that Jordan Belfort is the villain in the movie. And he ends up going to jail and losing his wife. And presumably there's some separation from his children and he loses a lot of his money. And even today, the real Jordan Belfort is still paying restitution to his victims. Same thing with Scarface. People cling to the push it to the limit montage sequence in the movie where he's like taking all the big duffel bags of money to the bank. And the guy at the bank is like, what the fuck am I going to do with all this money? <laughs> it's like they forgot the last 20 minutes of the movie where everything's completely going to shit. So yeah, America.